In a previous video, I talked about how me deciding to be successful wasn't a result of me thinking that I'm better than others. I want to expand on that. Let me begin by saying that not only do I not believe that I'm better than others, on the contrary, I know that I'm very slightly below average in my intelligence, in my baseline level of general abilities and skills, everything. But I'm okay with it. I have absolutely no problem with this fact. In fact, and I know this is going to sound absurd, but I actually prefer it that way. This is what I want to talk about in this video. Let me first back that ridiculous claim up with a couple of examples. The first one is back from when I was in the 11th grade. This is what I looked like back then. After getting tired of feeling ashamed every time I looked in the mirror, I convinced a couple of friends that we should all start going to the gym. All of us determined to look better, to lose fat and to build muscle, we decided to go every evening. We would come home from school, spend a few hours researching what exercises were the best and how to do them, and then we'd meet in the gym, teach each other what we'd learnt, and spend the next hour or so performing all of those exercises. It was an amazing experience, to say the least. The first productive thing that any of us had ever done. The problem arose around three months in when I noticed myself making considerably greater gains than my friends. That is when I realized that I had above average genetics muscle building wise. I got proud, I got comfortable, I started missing sessions every now and then. It wasn't long before I was missing more days than I went until I stopped altogether. Let me contrast that with another example. This happened around the end of the last semester of my undergraduate when I decided to start preparing for this GMAT. I had two friends from school who started their prep with me. All of us had fucked around throughout our college lives, just barely getting by. And our college grades reflected that. We realized that GMAT was our last shot at redemption and the only variable on our resume is that we still had a shot at improving. Around a month into our prep, one of my friends got quite confident he had been somewhat of a topper throughout school and since most of the syllabus is of 10th grade math and English, he decided to book a date for the next week. He ended up scoring a good 690 and was really happy with his score. Another month in, the other friend too gave his exam, scoring a 670 and he too was quite happy with his score. I remember the day he gave his exam. I was just finishing up with quant and had all of verbal left. I did some research and found that my pace was around half of that of the average GMAT candidate. I felt terrible about this for a little while, but very soon realized that the only thing that mattered was my score on exam day. It didn't matter how much effort I had to put in, it didn't matter how much time it took me. I realized at worst, I would miss out on a couple of seasons of a show that I wasn't even that interested in in the first place. To keep myself going, I even went to the extent of promising myself that once I was done with GMAT, I'd watch a couple more hours of Netflix every day to make up for lost time. I ended up completely giving up Netflix by the time I was done with GMAT, but that's a story for another day. And when I finally gave the exam, I scored a 730. Just for context, the average GMAT score is a 565. The average score of a Harvard admit is 730. Let me give you another example. Mental health. See, I was blessed to have fairly decent mental health all my life and so it wasn't something I ever put any thought into. Over the past couple of years, however, my mental health had deteriorated to a level that I had perpetual anxiety and depression. It was at this point that I actively started working on it for the first time. And today, my mental health is at least 10 times better than what it ever was. Once I started journaling, I realized that this effect carried over in every aspect of my life. Over a long enough period of time, I always performed worse at things that I'd started off above average at and genuinely quite good at things that I'd started off below average at. I wanted to share these personal experiences with you because they were significant learning opportunities for me. These experiences taught me that if there's one thing that determines success more than anything else, more than luck, more than talent, it's consistency. They taught me that if I put my mind to it, there's nothing that I can't do. And they gave me the confidence that comes along with that realization. As long as you believe, as long as you know that you will only get better and better, and as long as you keep at it, there's nothing that can keep you from excelling. I realize that it's difficult to take away learnings from someone else's experiences. 
So I want to end this by encouraging you to take a little time and think about such instances that you must have experienced through your life. I'm certain there will be at least a few. Think back to the times you started off terrible at something but with time and consistency became a master at and think of the things that you're quite good at even without putting in much effort. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.